Yes, despite our best efforts, bad decisions are as inevitable as death, taxes, and the grocery store running out of your favorite flavor of ice cream, at least up next, uh, up, is it, when it's up to our next guest. But they're also just as predictable. Um, my next guest is Mr. Dan Ariely. He's going to talk about that. He's the best-selling author of The Upside of Irrationality and Predictably Irrational. Mr. Ariely, welcome here. My pleasure. First, we're going to talk about something else, not your TED Talk. We're going to talk about that later. But you have a weekly podcast, and the title of that is Arming the Donkeys. Yes. Why that name? So first of all, I should point out it's not really weekly. I try for weekly, but oh, okay. we know about procrastination there we and go, uh, yeah. delays and unplanned things. The, the idea of the arming the donkeys is that we are not as wonderful as we think we are. We're a bit more stubborn and less are you intelligent. Are talking about me now? No, 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 no. Oh, other okay. people. Other, okay, it's okay, always okay. other people. Yeah. Um, but there's the arming part, and the yeah. arming part is the idea that we can actually do better. Yeah. If we just ourselves, we're going to fail, but we can actually think about how to improve. And part of it is knowledge, part of it is technology. So it's about thinking of ourselves as less wonderful than we are, but, but think about ourselves. what tools are going to get us to be okay. better. So far for that title. You were on stage uh, a few hours earlier. Uh, you had uh, the laugh uh, in, the, in, the, in the audience. They were laughing and they were interested in your talk. And not from, it was, I was interested as well, so I'm very honored that you're here. Let's have a look at some clips of what you were saying. There's an old story. It's kind of a nice story. It's a story about cake mixes. When they introduced cake mixes in the U.S., it turns out housewife at the time did not accept them. They had mixes for all kinds of things, for muffins, for uh, bread, cake mixes, not so much. And they wondered why. The taste was perfectly fine. They found out that what was missing was a feeling of flavor. If you basically put some water and a cake mix, mix it together, put it in the oven and a cake comes out, you can't take credit for that. No, you can't take credit for that. That's why they took the milk and the eggs out, and then all of a sudden it's your cake. It's your cake, yeah. Yeah. I want to introduce you to your neighbor. That's Mr. Brian Bogart. He's the general manager, strategic innovation here at uh, KPN. Mm -hmm. um, Correct. You listened to the TED Talk of Mr. Ariely. What struck you the most? Well, I think uh, what struck me most is because I'm part of a multinational company, is the example you gave uh, with, uh, with a software company. We said, if you don't really give attention, love, tender and care to your people, then you will not get the most out of them. Um, are you aware of any um, studies with respect to cor correlation between corporate cultures and, and for instance, uh, stock performance? Yeah. So, so it's actually very tough to do, right? I, I love experiments because in an experiment you can actually control everything. Yeah. So you can create one group that does this and one group that does that. Uh, the stock market and corporate cultures are uh, very hard to experiment. So we see lots of efforts. For example, you think about Google, right? Google take 20% of people's work time and tell them, do whatever you want. It's an incredible assignment. And, you know, you can say, where's the loss of efficiency? Google is not doing badly. Mm -hmm. now, we, we don't have the controlled experiment. We don't, have, we don't know what would have happened to Google if we asked people to work all the time and no. not allow people to do any of their own uh, projects. We see lots of other companies, particularly startups, doing all kinds of interesting things culturally. But the problem is we can't really trace that because there's not equivalent. We don't know what to, what to compare it to. I'm, I'm actually hopeful that as kind of behavioral economics and experimental science is becoming more popular, companies are going to start doing it. But we're not there yet. No. Well, you study irrationality versus rationality. About, you, you study the fact that we wake up in the morning and we, we want to do all these good things. Go to the gym, don't eat fat food, work hard, etc. And then at the end of the day, we did exactly the opposite of that. Uh, sadly, too often, yeah. So yeah. there's a couple of sad things to realize about it. One is that this question about intertemporal choice, about now versus later, it's a basic human problem. Uh, think about overeating, undersaving, not exercising, texting and driving. I mean, I, I'm not going to ask you which one of those. Everything. Uh, everything. <laughs> and all of those are things that we know in principle what's good for us. We just don't feel like doing it right now. No. And here's a general way to think about this. Imagine I asked you, what would you rather have? Half a box of chocolate now or a full box of chocolate in a week? And I put the half a box of chocolate now. Ah, that's what true. would you do? Uh, probably say, I would say... Give me the half now. Right? Yeah. Imagine I pushed the choice to the future. And I said, what would you rather have? Half a box of chocolate in a year or a full box of chocolate in a year and a week? It's the same decision. It's, same it's asking decision. you whether you're willing to wait another week for another half a box of chocolate. But phrase in the future, you're perfectly patient. You'll wait, you'll yeah. eat well, you'll not procrastinate. 
So this is the problem. The temptation really changes us in dramatic ways. Yeah. The other part of this sad equation is that the world around us is all about tempting us. Think about all the commercial forces that create the environment in which we operate. Stores, the internet, are they about getting a long-term No, they're interest? all about short-term, yeah. And they I'm want sorry, our money, attention, and time right now. Yeah, that's good to know. I'm sorry I have to interrupt you because the people in, uh, on stage are waiting to go on with that. That's also a short-term thing. We wanted to talk for the long-term. I'm sorry about that, but we were happy to have you here even on a short notice in the talk show. Thank you, Mr. Ariely. Um, ja, en ladies and gentlemen, ik spreek jullie gewoon in het Engels aan. We gaan terug naar de zaal, want daar staan de volgende sprekers te trappelen om te beginnen. Dus door met de volgende TED Talks.